In this tutorial, I want to talk about a capital budgeting technique known as internal rate of return. Internal rate of return along with net present value are the most commonly used capital budgeting techniques. And what internal rate of return does is it calculates a rate of return for the project. And a lot of, a lot of uh, financial officers like to use this because it, it's very intuitive to think about the rate of return on a project. How do you calculate internal rate of return? Well, it's closely tied to net present value. In fact, IRR is the interest rate that makes NPV equal to zero. If you've looked at bond pricing and you've calculated yield to maturity, this is exactly the same calculation. To calculate yield to maturity, we want to define an interest rate that made the present value of the cash flows, the interest payments or the coupon payments and the return of principal equal to the cost of the bond. Well, here we're looking for uh, um, an interest rate that makes the present value of the cash flows from the project equal to the cost of the investment. So if you wanted to write it, you could write it this way. You want, you have NPV equals the cash flow in the first period divided by one plus the interest rate, okay, and all the way out for however many periods you have, dot, 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 okay, you have the cash flow in year N divided by one plus the interest rate raised to the nth power minus the cost of the investment. So you're looking for the R that makes NPV equal to zero. That's what that's what net that's what internal rate of return is. All right. How do we calculate this? Well let me go let me go to a spreadsheet here and then I'll come back and, and um, show you how to do it on the financial calculator. In the old days you actually had to do this by trial and error. And I've already put the numbers in here. We said the, uh, from the example I had uh, here, it's 10,000 is the cost, 5,000 is the first cash flow, 4,000, 8,000, and 5,000. So I've already put those in here to save time. And what we need is we need the present value of each one of these cash flows, and we need an interest rate. So I'm gonna put the interest rate up here at the top. If you're somebody who has, um, and let's pick an interest rate of 10% for now. And here we have the present value of the cash flows. And let's see if we can do that. That already has the present value in it. So I'll just put equals uh, B5. All right, but here I want to put in a formula. Present value. And the rule is you put in the interest rate, which is in B2. I want to copy that down, so I'm going to put a dollar sign in. Number of periods is in A6. This is one period. There's no payment. And there is a, there's a future value. And the future value here is going to be equal to, we need to put that in as a negative number, so we're going to put it in as negative B6. You may recall that things come in out as, as opposite signs, so we want that to be a positive number. So the present value of $5,000 uh, one year into the future is $4,545.45. So I'm just going to copy this down. If you haven't used the spreadsheet before, I have a tutorial on using the spreadsheet, but you basically block off the cell, and you'll notice you have sort of a three-dimensional plus sign. If you move to the corner, there's a little box here. You move to the corner, it becomes a two-dimensional plus sign, and you left-click the mouse, and you just drag and copy this down. Okay, so we have present value of all of this, and we just want to add all this stuff together. So up here, we have auto sum, so I'm just going to hit that. It's just going to add that up. So the NPV, this is NPV we've calculated. 
is $7,276.83. So that's too low an interest rate. We need a high, uh, we need a higher interest rate to bring this number down. That'll make the present value of these cash flows smaller. So let's try 20%. All right, still too, still too low an interest rate. Let's try 30%. This looks like a pretty good project here. Okay, still too, still too high, 40%. All right, we went too far. Now we have a negative number here. So let's try, we know it's between uh, 40%, 30%, and 40%. So let's try 35%. Okay, that's a little too low. So let's try 37.5%. Let me uh, let me add a decimal place here so that we know that I used 37 and a half. That is still too low. So let's try 38 percent. Okay, getting closer. Maybe 38 and a half. 38.5. Okay, not quite. 39. A little too high. So maybe 38. 0.75 percent, uh, 38.9 percent, uh, okay, pretty close, okay, we're not going to get much closer now, I don't know, 38.95 point, point percent, let's try that, okay, that's a little too high, all right, so you keep trying, it's just trial and error, 38.95 Let's try. Okay, we're not going to do much better than that. Okay, it's someplace in there, 38.9192%. The reason I had to use trial and error is this is a nonlinear equation. So even if you're excellent with algebra, you're not going to be able to solve this out. You have to you have to do it by trial and error. And you may notice I'm not I'm not sure it'll work out that way, but when I do it on the financial calculator. Usually, when you do things like 5 plus 2 equals, you get an immediate answer. You may notice that when we punch this in, that it's a little bit slow in giving you the answer, and that's because the calculator is using trial and error. It's doing exactly the same thing we did before. It just does it a lot faster than we do it. So let's see if we can use, the best thing to use is this cash flow worksheet. So I'm going to clear this by hitting second clear worksheet and I'm going to put these numbers in. Okay, the first cash flow is the cost, which is minus ten thousand. And don't forget to hit enter. I'm going to scroll down. Next cash flow is five thousand. Enter. Next okay. It's only the frequency is one, so we'll just leave that at one. Scroll down. Four thousand. Enter. And again, we only have one frequency of one. Now we have 8,000 for the third cash flow. Enter. And then the last cash flow is 5,000. All right, let me make sure I put all my numbers in. Okay, I did. We hit IRR, and then we hit Compute, and hopefully we should get about 38.925% or something. Now 38.909. It was actually quite fast but oftentimes it's a little bit slower than that, okay, depending on how complicated the problem is. So, in fact, that's pretty much what we got here, right? We got 38 point, you know, we can, wait, we could punch in 38.909, something like that. That's really close, right, 8%. So there we go. All right, we got the right answer. So what's the decision rule? The decision rule is if IRR is greater than the cost of capital, the cost of capital being the required return. Okay, so I'll put that down here. then you want to accept the project. The project is returning more than you require, okay? Or more than the cost of capital, which is a required rate of return. You can see a separate tutorial that, I'll, that I've created on the cost of capital.
If it's less than this, then we reject this. And if it's equal to this, then we're indifferent. By indifferent, we mean that you're getting exactly the return you require. No more, no less. So it's not an exceptional project, but it's not a bad project either. It's like looking for a job. You decide that you need to, uh, a salary of $50,000. Perhaps you already have an offer of $50,000 on the table from some business. If somebody offers you exactly 50000 then you sort of flip a coin as to which job you take. You're indifferent. If somebody offers you less than 50000 you'll reject it. You'll take the job that you already have in hand for 50000 And if somebody offers you more than 50000 you'll clearly accept it. So that's the same concept. Okay? IRR, although it's very closely related to NPV, it has problems. Okay? It, it uses a lot of the things that we like. We use the cost of capital as our risk measure, so we are accounting for risk. We are accounting for all of the cash flows, which is good. We're using time value of money, which we also said was a criteria we wanted to use. One of the problems, though, is that this can be, this, this is not an arbitrary number, but the IRR can give you funny solutions. Okay? This was quite clear cut. And in future tutorials, I'll show you some of the problems that occur if you're trying to compute the IRR and compare different projects, particularly mutually exclusive projects, that is projects where you can only do one but not both of the projects. You can run into problems here. And depending on the internal rate of, uh, I'm sorry, depending on the cost of capital, you may get different solutions as to which project to do. Okay? Both projects may be desirable, but they may be desirable at different interest rates depending on how the cash flows are. So IRR is the second most common or the uh, one of the two most commonly used measures of uh, capital budgeting or techniques of capital budgeting. It's quite easy to compute using the financial calculator. There's also a function here. Let me see if I can do that. You can also use the function to calculate this in Excel. And if I, let's see, equals IRR, and you tell it where the cash flows are. The cash flows are in B5 to B9. And it gives us, again, the same answer. We could give it a couple more decimal places if we wanted. And that's exactly what we got before. So it's, uh, it's quite easy to compute with the calculator or the spreadsheet. Okay? It was hard in the old days when you had to do it by trial and error. But it will give you misleading results sometimes. And in future tutorials, I'll show you how to deal with those problems.